So number eight then from paper two of the 2016 higher mass. There you go, eight marks. That's the wave equation question. First part for four. Simply express this combination of sines and cosines. Notice, same angle, so it's not a double angle question. In this form, in the form of a single trig function, in this case a cos. K is greater than zero. And notice A could be anything here, so it's not giving you a clue about what size it might be. Right, other thing to notice is it's in radians. There's no degree signs anywhere, and I mentioned that 2 pi. Well, the way they want you to do this is to expand that using your addition formulae, your compound angle formulae. So you look up the front for cos of the sum of two angles, and you'll find cos cos minus sine sine. So it's k times them both. So it'll be k cos x cos a minus k sine x sine a. Now doing that gets you the first mark. We did we'll look up the front. And I'll just take time to rewrite this as coefficient times term because a is just the fixed number here. X is the actual variable. So that's k cos a lots of cos x minus and that's k sine a lots of sine x. Because what you do next is to equate corresponding terms. I'll equate the sine ones first. So if these sine terms are meant to be the same, it means negative k sine a is meant to be negative 2, or put simply, k sine a equals 2. Similarly, if these two cos terms are meant to be the same, then k cos a must equal 5. Now, stating this gets you the second mark. I'm going to give them names because what you've really got is a pair of simultaneous equations. But as far as the marks are concerned, they don't care how you do this particularly. They just want the answer for the next mark. The way that you find k is actually to take the two equations, square them and add them. That way you get sine squares plus cos squares, which will come to a 1. So if you do that, you'd end up with k squared equals 2 squared plus 5 squared. That's 4 and 25 is 29, which means k equals root 29. That's worth a mark. Notice it's not plus or minus the square root because it said k is greater than 0. The way you get to a is to remove the k's by dividing them. If you do 1 divided by 2, k would cancel out k, sine over cos becomes tan, and that would equal 2 upon 5 which means a is the inverse tan of two-fifths. Now it's in radians, and that's still one of the fractions that you know. So put it into a calculator, making sure it's in radians, or you could get it in degrees and then change your answer afterwards into radians, as long as you change it into radians. Put it into a calculator, gives you this. Now I'll not put it down here because you have to sort out where it is first of all. It's 0 0.3805 and so on. But where is it? Just because that's positive doesn't mean it's going to be the first quadrant one necessarily. Check that from the simultaneous equations. Both of these statements have to be true. All sine tan cos. The sine, since k is positive, and that's a positive, the sine has to be positive, so you're either here or here. The statement's got to be true. Since k is positive, and that's positive, the cosine's got to be positive, so you're either here or here. So the only one that solves the simultaneous pair, the only one that applies to them both is in the first quadrant. So that means, you, in fact, you do have that angle there. So the angle would be 0 0.381 radians. Write the radian bit in if you like. Now, they don't care really how much you round that off. You're going to get the mark just for 0.38 or more. Putting more figures in. But just as you would normally put degrees to one decimal place, the radian equivalent of one decimal place is three decimal places. Even, even at that, the third decimal place in a radian is one thousandth of a radian. Since that's 180 degrees, that means that's really 0.18, so it's slightly bigger than a tenth of a degree. That's the closest equivalent you'll get. Use three decimal places. If you do that, you get a mark. Well, that's not quite strictly true. You get the mark. Once you've done that, and put it all together, and the other one's going back to this form. So it's equal to root 29 cos of x plus 0 0.381.
Now you get the mark. So part B, this is where you would use this previous result from part A. So there's another four marks which says this. Here's a sketch of part of the graph of 10 plus 5 cos x minus 2 sin x. Notice that's just the same as this. 5 cos x minus 2 sin x is equivalent to this cosine. Notice which has been shifted back. So instead of it starting at the top, it's going back a bit. And plus 10 simply means it all lifts up. So 10 plus means it oscillates about the line y equals 10, going up root 29 and down root 29. Anyway, it shows part of that graph and this horizontal line, the line with the equation y equals 12, it intersects at these two places and it simply says, what's the x coordinates? Those will be angles. What are the x coordinates of P and Q? Well, if they intersect, then obviously at those points, the y coordinates will be the same. So you could write this, 10 plus 5 cos x minus 2 sin x should equal 12. Now, that doesn't get you the first mark yet until you simplify those, until you start it off. So take the 10 across and subtract. 5 cos x minus 2 sin x equals 2. That gets you the first mark. Then the next marks we're realising, wait, that's just that. So you could replace it with this. Root 29 cos of x plus then the angle which should be in radians, equals 2. And look at the marking scheme. If you've got the angle in radians in part A, then your answer must be in radians in part B. Ideally, of course, that's what the question was about. But if you had your angle in degrees in part A, so you'd lose a mark for not changing them, and left it all in degrees in part B, that'd be fine for 4. But if you had your angle in degrees in part A, as a final answer, not as part of the working, just left it as an angle in degrees, and then worked through this and decided this time to change it to radians. Then you'd lose marks again here. If it's in radians, just stick to radians. Yes, you can use degrees for a translation and back again, but make sure your final answer is what they want. A, answer in radians. B, answer in radians. Now, that's just a simple linear style equation in that there's only one mention of x. So how can you get to x? Get rid of the root 29, get rid of the cos, and get rid of the 0.381. So the first step would be cos of x plus 0 0.381 equals 2 divided by root 29. Now, this is the line where you get the second mark. Because you suppose you could just have jumped straight in with this. Instead of putting that down, you could have simplified it down to the 2 as you wrote it. And instead of leaving the root 29 as you wrote this out, you might as well just have taken it across. Next line is going to be inverse cos. So it'll be the inverse cos of 2 over root 29. Putting that in gives you 1.19028 and so on. But what are the two angles if the cosine's positive? All sine, tan, cos. It means it's either in the first quadrant or it's in the th fourth quadrant. It's either this angle here, which will be that one, or it's all the way around to there. If you're doing it in degrees, that'd be 360 minus it. If you're doing it in radians, it'll be 2 pi minus it. So the answers will be taking it to, well, that's the acute angle. The answers will be taking it to three decimal places, will be 1.190 or 2 pi minus 1.190. So it's 1.190 or 5.0928, which is 5.093. Now, that's the next mark. And then the last mark will just be for subtracting that from both of them. So that would come to 9, then that's going to be a 0, and then 4 away is 8. And again, that's the three decimal places. Because that was rounded off to three decimal places and I was using that rounded off to three decimal places, you could have used the original exact value, but then you'd have had to go back to get the exact value of this one, which of course disappeared. And that'll be 2, 8 from 9 is 1, and then 3 from 50 is 47. 4.712, and that's the final mark. 
Essentially, that was it for four marks. The only awkward thing was just the nasty numbers because it was in radians with all these decimal places.